Hello. Um, today I'm going to be demonstrating seed sowing into various types of containers by hand. Now, the first step in sowing into any type of container is making sure that your soil is properly moist moistened. So, uh, in order to do that, you want to evenly wet your soil and make sure that the moisture is evenly spread throughout through hand mixing, mixing with a shovel, and your soil should have the feel of a slight of a wrung out sponge. Um, feeling like a little bit of moisture, but not dripping wet or leaving too much moisture on your hand. And then we'll move to filling. So when we're filling, it's really critical to make sure when we're filling into plug trays that we are filling all the cells uniformly and fully. Now this creates a really important step because without making sure that the cells are uniformly filled, once the trays are watered and the, the soil starts to settle, we'll have variation that will lead to um, differences in seedling health, moisture retention, etc. So making sure that each individual cell is fully filled is really important. I like to drop this tray a few times on a flat level surface to help settle the soil and then I'll add a little bit more on top. And then I will just go ahead and spread that across and do one more tamping. Then I'll brush off any extra that has really um, clumped up. And I should have nice, um, full, uniform, even cells in which you can see the lines in between, but the soil is fully filled to the surface. I'm going to demonstrate sowing a large seeded crop into the styrofoam plug tray. When we're thinking about technique, the first thing we want to think about is what is the size of our seed and how deep do we want to sow it and what's the best way to make that happen. So with these, these are a large seeded summer squash, a zucchini. I'm going to sow by hand and dibble by hand. Because these seeds are larger, I'm going to sow them deeper. General rule of thumb is that the deeper you sow the larger, the deeper that you sow the seed, the larger the seed has to be. If you sow small seeds too deeply, they'll run out of uh, stored energy reserve before their cotyledons can break above the soil surface. So with these large seeds, I'm going to sow them about uh, twice as deep as they are wide. That's a general rule of thumb. And I'm going to hand dibble which looks like me using my fingers to make dibble holes. Ideally, you want to dibble in the center as much as possible and add a uniform depth. Now that you've dibbled, you'll want to just go ahead and drop your seeds directly into each dibble and have them land ideally in the center as best you can while also balancing your speed and efficiency. Now, in terms of these seeds, because they are larger seeds, it's fairly easy to cover them up just by pinching the soil closed. And you can do that like this or even just like this. And you'll want to make sure that all of them are completely buried. Now, if I had a smaller seeded crop, I would most likely be sifting a, a thin layer of soil over the top to cover them. Another method that I can demonstrate today is sowing by hand into open flats or broadcasting seeds. 
And this is a really good technique when you want to sow a high density of plants in a small amount of space or you want to give your plants a little bit more root space as they're growing. So first, uh, like with any container, you'll want to start out with your tray uniformly filled to the top and um, settled as well and with a proper soil moisture. Now, um, when I'm broadcasting into this flat, you'll want to know approximately what is an appropriate density to sow your seed and how much seed you want to be outputting into your tray. So one thing that we commonly sow into open flats is onions. Um, because they are um, really uh, small seedlings and we usually bare root them when we plant them, um, we'll typically sow at a very high density into an open flat. So a technique for that is knowing um, the amount of seeds that we'll want to sow per flat. Um, for us, it might be um, 500 per a flat this size. And then we'll just try and start spreading them evenly throughout the flat. I like to use a card or a little sheet of cardboard to help me see and distribute them a little bit more uniformly. And so we'll want to just be covering the surface. as best we can. Okay. Once you've broadcasted your seed, then we'll go ahead and cover it up. Um, I like to use a, a thin, a fine screen to sift a layer of soil over the top. And so I'll go ahead and sift this over the top. and make sure that all that seed is well covered. I like to give it a, a gentle pat down for good seed to soil contact. And then we'll go ahead and label that and water it in. And that's how you can broadcast really easily into open flats. So another technique of sewing by hand that I'll demonstrate is sewing at a high density in a flat. But rather than broadcasting, we're actually going to make very dense rows. Um, we use this technique for things like eggplant, pepper, tomato, things that will be pricked out or potted up into another container um, pretty shortly after germinating. Um, once these seedlings have a branching root system and express their first true leaves, we'll move them up into another container. But for now, we're gonna sow at extremely high density so that the space that we have to manage is less and we can be much more efficient about our watering and space usage. So the way that I've set this up is that um, I'll be able to fit 13 rows of peppers in this, in this wooden flat, which is very quite a high density. Each row will have about 30 seeds. We sow about 30 seeds um, with the expectation of getting 25 um, viable plants per row. So I've also set up little plastic dividers to marquee out the rows just so that it's more clear once the plants have started growing and filling out um, exactly which ones are which variety. I have a number of different varieties in this flat which are labeled at the head of each row. And so it's really important when you're doing a lot of varieties per tray just that you know which, exactly which one is which. So the way that I'll begin is actually by creating um, essentially a, a shallow trench to plant, to sow the seeds into. Um, and so I like to do this with a pencil or a thin piece of wood. And then I'll go ahead and sow 30 seeds for this row. Um, this is a jalapeno. 
And so one way that I like to do it is to put my seeds into a card so that I can push them out one by one with a pencil. This is a efficient technique for me because I can see them and I can control the way that they're coming out. So I will sow 30, about 30 seeds per row. And these are, they're not going to be too deep, but we do want to make sure they have enough soil to be fully covered over them. Once you've sown, you've laid down all your seeds in a row. I like to see the entire flat and then be able to see everything in the flat. You can go ahead and close up your trench. And an easy way to do that is just gently with your fingers, just pinching the sides together. And we want to make sure everything is fully covered. Okay. Just give it some seed to soil contact and make sure that they are all covered. And then we'll go ahead and water this in and situate it on some heat mats so that we'll have good germination. Building on um, some of what we've looked at already in terms of seed sowing and filling containers, I wanted to go a little bit more into the idea of dibbling. Dibbling is simply creating a space in the cell or in your tray for your seeds to land so that then they can be covered thereafter. Um, in many instances, folks would simply use their fingers and make little depressions in the soil um, to the appropriate depth depending upon the seed that you're sowing. Another way to go about it is to make yourself something that looks like this. This is what I would call a dibbler board and it's basically just a sheet of plywood, a series of dowels that um, were uh, glued into this dibbler board and all I did was take a brand new tray, one of the trays that we're going to use, and and lay out the exact pattern of that tray on the dibbler board and then with a drill press with a drill press drilled small holes for each of these little dowels to go in and then glued them in place and what you get with this is the ability to dibble many trays at once fairly quickly so I set it on my tray I line it up I give a slight press and then I have a entirely evenly dibbled tray and I can do one and then I can move right over do a second and then so forth as many trays as you need to and you know one of the ways that we really think about efficiency is trying to consolidate your steps so in this instance I've got eight or 10 trays to dibble. I'm gonna do them all at once so that I can be done with the dibbler, the dibble board, and I can move on to the next, um, to the next step in the process. So, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, this one happens to be for our 242 trays. We also do a little bit larger cell tray. So this one is a 162 with a hole pattern and dibble pegs uh, drilled and placed to fit the 162 tray. So whatever tray type you're using, if you're going to sell multiple trays of things, be, taking the time to build something like this can save you a tremendous amount of time as you work down the road to actually sow lots and lots of containers.